thank you. So I'm uh, Remy. I'm uh, working at Berti, and uh, we are working on a secure P2P messaging application. And the topic of today is how do we communicate offline? So uh, we are a messaging application, so we have to uh, connect uh, devices together. To do that, we have uh, some different way. The first and common way is uh, with uh, internet. And uh, we don't want to use central server, so we use the P2P IPFS network. The second way is uh, when devices are connected to a local network. So we use MDNS and it's built in to IPFS. It's offline communication. The third way is uh, when there is no uh, infrastructure. So we want to connect uh, devices with wireless, uh, wireless uh, technologies. And it's not uh, built in on IPFS. So it's, uh, that is uh, we, we are going to talk today. Uh, the use case uh, of the of, of, sorry, of, uh, of offline communication uh, are on degraded infrastructure. So I think of uh, natural disaster or uh, war when uh, they destroy infrastructure. The second case, use case is on a filtered or censored sunship uh, network, like uh, riots. And the last use case is when there is no network. So for example, when you are with your uh, workmate on a plane and you want to continue to work with them and chat with them, or uh, when you are on isolated uh, places, uh, with friends, uh, like uh, big festivals, <laughs> and you want to check with them. So to provide uh, that technology to the most of people, uh, we must only use uh, technologies that are built in in smartphone. So these technologies are uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Classic, the BLE, uh, so it's uh, the Bluetooth Low Energy, and Wi-Fi. And uh, we must uh, know their main characteristic to know what we can do with that. The first is the range. So uh, in Bluetooth, we can speak from 25 meters to like uh, 100 meters with a speed of uh, one megabyte around. Why uh, there is a gap in the, in the data? It's because uh, in Bluetooth, Bluetooth and BLE, you can have a, a different uh, configuration when you choose uh, to increase the range and decrease uh, the speed rate. So it's, that's why uh, there is a gap in the, in the data. With uh, these technologies, we, you can have only seven or five simultaneous connections. Uh, it's pro it's a problem for us, and I will talk uh, about that uh, after. Uh, in terms of consumption, Bluetooth um, has a low power consum consumption, but uh, to implement that technology in the most of devices, uh, the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, was created to uh, consume uh, less uh, energy. Uh, 10 or 100 uh, less. For the Wi-Fi, um, we have a lot uh, more range, up to 300 meters, with a big data rate, uh, some gigabytes, and a lot of simultaneous connection, but uh, the cost is a uh, big power consumption. Uh, so with that uh, data, for us, uh, offline communication can be done when two devices are uh, in a range of several meters to send data. And uh, if, your if these two devices are not in the range, but a third device is, uh, is between them in the range, 
and if they are in the same group of conversation, so the pink device can be a relay for them, and blue device can send messages to yellow device. Know uh, how to implement that technology uh, in Bertie. So this, uh, this is the Bertie stack, and Bertie is uh, built on uh, IPFS. IP, uh, the IPFS uh, layer network is LIP2P, and LIP2P is a grid uh, project. <laughs> and because uh, it's modular, you can use uh, different transport. So there is um, TCP, UDP uh, transport, and some uh, innovative transport like uh, Quick and WebSockets. So it's here we can put our new proximity transport. We can hit proximity transport to send message over wireless technology to a uh, peer. Uh, so the proximity transport is between, uh, on the top, uh, is between LIP2P and some native driver. Uh, native driver are uh, dependent on the system you are running. So for example, on Android, uh, we used uh, we use uh, Android nearby. On uh, iOS, we use multiple connectivity. These are two proprietary drivers. And uh, there are a lot of uh, advantages. For example, they are straightforward to use. Uh, they are stable because uh, they are dev developed by a big team. They combine Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi together to have a, sp a big speed and range. But uh, there is no interoperability between them. So uh, Android, an Android user cannot uh, talk with uh, iOS user. And Bertie uses two systems. So uh, we need to create a new driver, a new native driver for that over Bluetooth Low Energy to send data to each other. So what is, uh, in more details, Bluetooth Low Energy? It's a wireless personal area network that is present in a lot of uh, devices around us, so like uh, smart home, health, sport, fitness devices. Uh, its advantages are uh, the low consumption, the low power consumption, as uh, we, we saw before, and uh, it's cheap. Uh, so what is the connection model of the Bluetooth Low Energy? It's a client-server uh, model. It's a standard model. Uh, often, the server or peripheral uh, uh, device is a little uh, device like a smart. Uh, here it is a heart rate monitor. And the client or central device is a device uh, more so sophisticated, like a smartphone. And so it is the client to find the server. After that, it will try to connect to it. And when the connection is done, it will start a data transfer. Okay, so uh, the first step, the it's the discovery system. In the general way, uh, so there is two devices, and uh, they are uh, um, a MAC address. MAC address is a unique uh, identity, and uh, a server. The, the server, the, the peripheral device, will advertise some data to be found by the client. And the client will share uh, that data to be connected, to uh, initiate the connection. That data uh, is a list of services. For example, for the watch, there are two services, the heart rate service and the battery service. Um, and this service has a uh, unique identifier named UUID. 
um, in the Bertie case, it's not like that because uh, each device is a client and the server and the server at the same time. And the BLE is not uh, made in, uh, for that. So that can uh, create some conne connection instability uh, if the two devices try to connect each other. So we have to avoid that. And uh, to avoid that, uh, the device must to know uh, if it is already connected, connected with the remote device. So you can tell me to use the MAC address for that. But MAC address, uh, I didn't say you, MAC address rotates every time. For example, uh, the MAC address rotates every time and the MAC address is different for the client and for the server. So uh, we can use that. We, um, we must add some data with the Bertie service uh, to identify uniquely the, the devices. And uh, we put only four digits of the lp 2 ppr ID. Why four digits? Because in the advertising packet, we only put uh, 31 bytes. And if I remember correctly, the peer ID is 46 bytes. So uh, we put only four digits to identify uh, a device. So when uh, the, the client knows this four uh, digit, it will try to connect to the, to the remote device. And it will compare the remote device to its own device. If only uh, its own uh, peer ID, sorry, it will compare the remote peer ID with, with its own peer ID. And if its own peer ID is lexically lower, it will try to connect to the remote device. So uh, that guarantees we have only one way connection. After that connection, uh, the server and the client can exchange data. To do that, they must um, follow the GAT protocol. It's, uh, it's a protocol for the BLE. And GAT protocol have uh, GAT uh, attributes. It's like object. When uh, you want to read or write, you will use. So here, we have uh, GAT attributes like service. And each service has uh, one or more characteristic to read or write data. In Bertie, we have two characteristics, one for the uncheck, one the, for the lp 2 p data transaction, name writer here. Um, I put the I, UUID for the example of uh, the service and characteristics. So uh, in Bertie, I will, I will uh, tell you what is the uncheck uh, at this stage. So that I change at this stage. Uh, to set up the lp 2 p connection, just after the connection uh, in Bluetooth, uh, so we have to increase the speed rate because uh, by default it's very low. So uh, we, use, we increase the MTU to from uh, 23 to 117. The MTU is uh, uh, the... Um, the size of data you can read or write with one operation. So um, it's very important to increase that. And uh, the second uh, thing we, we do is to use L2CAP channel. L2CAP is uh, uh, in Bluetooth stack, is a low layer. And with BLE, we can use it directly to increase uh, data transactions. And, uh, increase by three uh, the, the speed. The second thing we do in the uncheck is uh, to exchange the peer ID because uh, each device must know the, the identity of the remote device. It's important. You will see after why. And uh, after that, the uncheck uh, permit us to handle this connection to do reconnection. Why? Because uh, in Bluetooth, sometimes 
a device is not aware that uh, it that is uh, disconnected from the remote device, so it will continue to write data or try to read data, for, uh, and uh, it, it's not good. So. Um, at the moment, uh, the remote data we try to reconnect to it, and uh, the um, the first device uh, will have some data right to the um, uncheck uh, characteristics, and uh, this device will know ah, I'm disconnected from the remote device, so I will correctly disconnect in me and try a good reconnection. So when the uncheck is uh, is done, so here we have two devices, one left and one, one right. So when the uncheck is done, uh, the proximity transport will tell to LIP2P, oh, I have a new, a new uh, peer, so add it to the peer store. At the same way, if uh, there is disconnection Bluetooth, the proximity transport uh, will remove, remove the peer on the peer store. So after uh, adding it, uh, lip, lip P2P will uh, try a connection to the remote device, and the remote device will wait uh, for the uh, incoming connection. But there is a problem. Um, sometimes uh, the second device uh, will make more time to finish its uncheck. And uh, when it receives uh, the incoming connection, it will not ready, so the connection will fade. So we have to put a cache in the proximity transport and uh, native drivers. So to conclude that, uh, I will uh, tell you some uh, BLE li uh, limitation and issues we have. Um, the most uh, issues is on Android devices because each device, each Android device, uh, there, there, is a, there are a lot of uh, different brands of Android devices. So, and each brand has its own uh, Bluetooth stack implementation. So, when uh, as a developer you use, uh, you use the Android API, it's the same for Android device. Uh, there, there, is, uh, there are different behavior, and sometimes uh, a bug can appear. Uh, we have the same problem between iOS and Android devices, because there is a different implementation of Bluetooth, of the Bluetooth stack. Another uh, limitation is uh, the low bitrate around 30 kilobytes per second. Uh, so in, uh, when we use Bluetooth, we cannot uh, exchange uh, big photography and just uh, exchange uh, text and uh, little pictures. Uh, the last limitation is a few simultaneous connections. So remember, it's five for uh, BLE. Uh, for example, you are with uh, some friends in the crowd and you want to speak with them, but your phone, uh, we try to connect with uh, other devices, other unknown devices, so uh, you cannot chat with your friends, and it's a problem. So we think to implement a connection manager that will limit the maximum connection to keep a stability with existing connection, and keep a connection with your friends, so here, peer of interest because you have some uh, the same group of conversation with these devices. And the connection manager uh, need to keep a connection for searching uh, around you new devices, because uh, it's maybe your friends. And uh, what for next, for future improvement? So um, there is a hundred nearby for iOS driver but uh, it's uh, in beta. The last time we, we try it, uh, there, there are lo um, some crashes, so we are waiting for a new version to test it again. And uh, we are looking for a contribution for other native driver uh, if you want. 
like uh, Linux, Windows. Voilà, thank you very much. And I have invite uh, Antoine uh, if you have some question. Yep. Hi. Hi. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, if if I understood correctly, uh, it's like if I have a Bluetooth connection with you, and you have a Wi-Fi connection with him, mm -hmm. I could send a message for a group that we three have, right? Yes. And everyone would receive it. Yes. Okay, exactly. and if I want to message him, but we are not in a group, no, it would work. No, no, it doesn't work. We it need to work. to be in the same group. Mm. For okay, for only if uh, if it's uh, a me to you message, uh, only chatting. Uh, if we are n not in another group, it wouldn't work at all. No, no, you need you need to have like a uh, member of the same group, uh, and uh, they, they will act as a relay. In fact, uh, it's la uh, the, the only mechanism we use for that is to use uh, IPFS. Uh, in fact, if you, s if you share the same content ID mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and uh, you have uh, like uh, someone between you and me uh, that uh, share it too, uh, you, you can, uh, he can ask me to, to give him, then he can give it to you. You you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah but uh, uh, it's it's on your future plans to implement something like a relay to do that that part that bit. No, no, because in fact uh, you have a, a really uh, really limited number of peers you can connect to. Uh, yeah. In Bluetooth, it's like uh, five devices yeah, maximum. Yes. I I understand that bit, but the the thing here is okay. I I only I am connecting with one people. Yeah, but and that people would be my relay to the remaining network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it could be cool if uh, you know. Uh, it, it could be. Uh, it could be cool, but it, it, it uh, it's really uh, a big project to have something. But uh, with uh, you know, like um, I don't know, a use case that will not. Uh, I think uh, happens so 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 easily. You you. Uh, you need to be like uh, with other better users, but we are not in the same group, and you have only one people that uh, will give you uh, one uh, o al uh, at least one s slot uh, free in your uh, connection pool, which is five uh, with BLE, uh, to uh, forward its packets to your internet connection or something. I don't know exactly what you uh, what you, what case you you think of, but uh, it's uh, yeah. We don't plan to to do that right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Amazing stuff. This is like super, super hard. Um, the fact that you're getting anything to work on BLE is just mind blowing. Um, I have two questions for Thanks. you. Uh, one, uh, about the language approach and how you're implementing this on different platforms. And then the second one was about the connection manager. And you mentioned that you had to implement your own. Um, what specifically is lacking from the connection manager that is in there presently that you had to layer in? Or what was the reason for that? Okay. Uh, the connection manager is not uh, the connection manager of Lippy2P. We, we use the connection manager of Lippy2P uh, also, but uh, when, uh, when we mentioned the connection manager in this talk, uh, Remy was talking about, uh, like in the native driver, uh, we have something that um, it's not yet fully implemented, but uh, we plan to have something that uh, Bertie protocol can say, okay, the group you are looking for now uh, in, in priority are this one. So let's say uh, you have a conversation open on your phone, so it's <laughs> probably the one that interests you uh, the more right now. So uh, the, the BLE uh, will take uh, his uh, five slots and uh, like, uh, I don't know, drop uh, three of, uh, of them to, to look only for peers that are part of this conversation. Then, uh, I don't know, you, you, have, you have found three peers of this conversation, you are in a big place like this, you can send messages, and uh, you switch to another conversation. We will keep, uh, let's say, one or two of these peers, uh, then uh, try to find two, uh, with, uh, within our five slots, like, let's say, uh, take two, or, or two, two slots to look for the new group you are looking for. And uh, try to, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, mitigate the small, uh, small amount of peer we, we can connect to. 
So you're, you're mapping your social prioritization onto your network topology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, based on the, the interface, uh, the user, uh, uh, you know, like uh, the group is open on, on its own. Yeah. Thank you. And what was the language you guys are writing in? Uh, it's mainly um, Objective-C on uh, iOS um, because uh, it's easier to integrate with, uh, with Golang because you can uh, uh, use Cgo, so you can directly use, uh, use Objective-C uh, with Cgo, uh, which is not the case with Swift uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, uh, we prefer Swift. <laughs> Cgo uh, use uh, Clang to compile and uh, Clang uh, can compile uh, Objective-C file, cannot compile uh, Swift. Yeah. That's why. Uh, and uh, on Android, we use uh, Java, which is a bit of a mess uh, because uh, uh, we can't uh, access directly uh, the uh, the GNI. Uh, we can just uh, do uh, do C call uh, to the Android API for all the stuff. So we need to have something really um, really painful to integrate. We need to have uh, like an Android context, which is something you have in a, in Android app, uh, to pass it to the native driver we implement in Java. Then to pass it to Go, uh, so Go can use it too. And uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, right now we, it it's it's working and uh, it uses uh, Java and Android and uh, Objective C on Darwin. So both iOS and uh, and macOS. Um, I'm curious from a product perspective, which parts of, of Birdie feel like they're working well on top of kind of this underlying technical framework and which parts are maybe areas for focus and, and kind of increased um, iteration. So like it sounds like potentially this is optimized a little bit for a larger group conversation since then you'll end up with many potential peers in that conversation that you're searching the network for. And so it's good maybe for an ongoing large group conversation, but maybe really hard when you're trying to do the zero to one, find the one other peer in the network that's also just booted up their birdie node and you're initially <laughs> both installing the application and trying to connect with each other. So maybe looking at it from a birdie product perspective, what's needed in order to kind of help bridge some of those pain points? Um, I, I don't know. In, in fact, uh, we think, uh, it, it's if your friend use uh, Bertie and you you plan uh, to to install uh, your Bertie client uh, on your laptop and you will work in your plane and you know that when you use Bertie you can communicate together if you are within range uh, of Bluetooth. Uh, for us, it's a good use case of uh, you can have like one to one uh, usage of this. But uh, we think uh, also um, one uh, good use case for Bertie is when uh, uh, in France, I, I think uh, in, uh, in Europe, you, you have a lot uh, of uh, festival with no infrastructure. So uh, you have a lot of people uh, somewhere on, on the countryside of, the, uh, of France uh, that uh, listen to music and concert and so on. Um, and uh, very often you don't have any uh, Wi-Fi connection and you have a bad cellular uh, connection. So in this case, it could be really cool to, to be able, and you have a lot of, uh, of crowd uh, listening to the concert. So it could be really cool to, to have people uh, being able to send messages with their group of friends. Um, and uh, the messages could, uh, in a, let's say, a, a big uh, uh, place uh, full of people, uh, like uh, bounce between users uh, to go to the, from one side of the crowd to the other side, uh, if people, uh, uh, are uh, well uh, 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 spaced uh, between uh, each other. So, yeah, for us, it's uh, like, like the use case, uh, uh, the one-to-one -one best use case is uh, two people working in the plane, and uh, a, uh, a one-to-many uh, use case is, uh, is like uh, something like that, a festival or something. Gotcha, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much, guys, for your speech. I uh, just wanted to know, to bounce back on the question he just asked before, uh, as I understood, like you're limited by the group you're in to receive and send messages to, um, but the definition of the group I understood is like the one we have on Messenger, that is to say everyone knows you belong to this group and everyone can see that you belong to this group, inside a group, and I wanted to know what are the, like, the technical limitations 
maybe security uh, concerns or whatever, to have like kind of a, a shadow group that would uh, concern everyone, just sharing the idea or whatever you need to be part of a group, to have like this uh, communication across long distances because you have this middle man, basically middle nod, allowing you to communicate one to one to someone who is not in range directly. And if the answer to this is because you ha can be connected up to five people for BLE, like isn't the number of five a key factor big enough to link together thousands of people if you just need one link between them? Um, it depends. In fact, um, uh, if you have, uh, let's say, uh, if you are in a crowd and uh, you have uh, two groups with different type of people, uh, and you have only, uh, in fact, you have five BLE slots, but we keep one of them to keep searching uh, peer. Uh, you, you need to have one slot free uh, uh, anytime. Uh, so we, we have like, uh, in fact, four uh, slots. Uh, and it's uh, it's really s it's not enough for a lot of for a lot of use cases. Uh, if we add like a shadow group, like you say, uh, and uh, everyone is inside and everyone can relay connection to each other, um, let's say you, you you are you are with your uh, your group of friends. So you have maybe I don't know uh, two slots uh, uh, used uh, to speak with them. Uh, if you have two slots for your shadow group, uh, it will be really harder to 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 have the chance to uh, be uh, you know uh, with uh, someone uh, this side and someone this side and to relay uh, a message for almost everyone in the crowd. It's uh, yeah, uh, we, we we don't know for for wha what we thought about. Uh, it's something uh, that could work uh, because it's really too limited. And about the privacy, uh, right now, uh, what we are doing is, uh, when you connect, um, Guilhem uh, talked about uh, the local discovery system. Uh, basically, when you connect to another peer using uh, BLE or proximity transport, uh, you will exchange your uh, Bertie topics. So uh, your Bertie topics can basically be uh, your uh, contact request uh, um, let's say rendezvous points. So if you want to to uh, to have someone that adds you on Bertie, you need to to listen to a, a specific rendezvous point. So you will give to the people you you connect to. Okay, I'm uh, I'm available for for this uh, on this rendezvous point for contact request, and you will have the same thing for uh, the group you are part of. Uh, and uh, we don't have uh, any solution to 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 mitigate the privacy issue to give to all your 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 rendezvous uh, to the people you connect to uh, the only thing we can do is to rotate uh, this rendezvous point so in fact all the rendezvous points uh, rotate every uh, uh, six hours uh, and they are, are based on uh, TOTP so uh, uh, we calculate every six hours a new rendezvous point so even if you speak with someone and you give him uh, all your rendezvous points the the worst thing you can do is just know that you are in like, uh, I don't know, 20 uh, conversation, something like that. But uh, it's not ideal, but uh, we, we don't know how to do it uh, another way. Uh, yeah. Uh, so have you guys uh, looked into ultra wide band at all yet? Uh, sorry? Uh, have you guys looked into ultra wide band yet? Uh, sorry, I don't uh, Ultra wide band, ultra wide band. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We, uh, in fact, we, we, uh, a friend of us uh, gave us uh, like a framework, uh, uh, a Samsung framework uh, that uh, that, uh, that use uh, uh, ultra wide band, uh, wide band. Sorry, uh, but uh, right now we we also just checked about uh, Gotena. I don't know if you know uh, Gotena. Uh, we 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 discuss uh, with uh, with people from Nodal, which is uh, like a LoRa uh, concurrent, uh, even if it's based on uh, on Bluetooth and cellular connection. So we explored uh, a few uh, a few uh, uh, projects like that. But uh, uh, generally, you you talk right band is really really slow in terms of bandwidth. Uh, so, so it's difficult to 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 have something uh, 
yeah, that work uh, for, for the better use case. Yeah, um, it, since it's such a low power protocol, um, it might be just good uh, just for peer exchange and signaling. Um, and then like uh, they could open up a Bluetooth connection for like actual transition of data. So you mean uh, like using LoRa or something to to detect someone, then you open a BLE connection? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know because uh, in fact uh, you you that's one of the particularities of the proximity to transport is that you cannot dial someone to BLE because you need to be within range with him. So you need to to. To to have your Bluetooth tag that uh, give you okay this guy is around uh, do you want to connect with him then you want you can connect with him try if you can send packets because uh, sometimes you can't uh, because uh, even if you 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 find it uh, you uh, you detect uh, uh, you you scan it you can connect to it but you can send packets uh, then uh, when you have all those steps uh, that are okay. Um, you you will uh, you will um, forward this to to the P2P, so to the peer store. Say okay, we have someone with this peer ID and is available on this connection uh, through BLE. But uh, you can't say uh, okay, uh, there is someone in the room and I want to connect to him and check if he's uh, uh, available on Bluetooth or something. It, it can't work like that because uh, yeah, uh, you you. In fact, you, you, you will need to, to connect to him first to, to know his him and uh, his peer ID, it's uh, this one and so on. Uh, one thing uh, that uh, Remy explained also is uh, uh, when you use Bluetooth on, uh, on uh, iOS, all the, you, you have something on BLE, you have a MAC address rotation. Uh, it's uh, something uh, that, uh, that, uh, that prevents uh, privacy issues. Uh, and uh, on iOS, everything is uh, abstract. So uh, iOS uh, take care of uh, of doing uh, of giving you like an ID, which is not the actual uh, MAC address uh, of the device. So you you don't have to 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 uh, to think about uh, all the the stuff. Uh, but uh, on Android, uh, you you can be literally connected to someone with a uh, MAC address. Then uh, on your scan, detect another MAC address, <laughs> so you don't know. Uh, you, you try to connect to it. In fact, it's the same uh, person, but his MAC address rotated uh, in the meantime, and uh, you have now uh, two connections with the same person. Then the two connections fail. So you have a lot of uh, of uh, cases uh, like that uh, with BLE, uh, uh, which is really really uh, difficult to handle, especially on Android. Yeah, thank you. So yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, really awesome talk. A um, few questions. So one is um, th the model that we were discussing with like the very limited number of connections and the, the gr social groups that's been pointed out in m many of the questions. But I, I, I think that the way that fire chat and other things like that have worked or things in literature is to really, really lean on the fact that you can create a connectivity lattice or like a mesh that you can then start forwarding packets. And with any kind of like large group scenario, you, I think you'll end up having to get there. Um, it may be really useful to do like a literature review of the, because there were a lot, there was a lot of research, research on this in the early 2000s of like which algorithms would lean, would, would produce like really good results. Um, and in particular, I think like the content uh, centric networking world, like the, has a lot of like really efficient protocols for low um, energy devices like um, uh, IoT things and so on that are extremely efficient in terms of um, describing interest packets for peers or for content and so on. Um, so you might be able to get to a point where like, you, you can basically build a stable mesh where you don't have a lot of churn. Um, and you can maybe use measure the distances to parties to try and connect in a kind of efficient way. And then send very, very low bandwidth messages um, to control to figure out how to set up um, some specific direct connections to then, then send um, higher bandwidth messages. So you can have like two or three connections dedicated to this like very low bandwidth mesh, um, and then after that, um, kind of send send higher bandwidth packets um, by setting up the specific connections, sending a message, and then tearing it down. Um, 
Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we, we need to, to, to investigate this, uh, this kind of scenario, but uh, right now uh, it's already really difficult to, to, to only have connection to, to peer of interest. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, if, uh, if, we can, um, if we can have something. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, I, I'm not sure of the use case you described. I, I, is it used to, to transfer data or just to localize people uh, in a place or something? Uh, both. I, I've seen both. OK. Um, because, yeah, in fact, the, the, um, uh, in Berti, uh, when you, you are uh, with uh, two people uh, next to each other and you, you are in the best condition, you have a uh, really limited bandwidth uh, with uh, BLE. And uh, uh, so it's OK to send uh, text messages, uh, for instance. But uh, I don't know, uh, I don't know uh, in, uh, in which extent it can be used uh, to, to bounce between uh, users for, for uh, content sharing. So it, it depends of, of the type of content, uh, obviously, but, uh, but I'm not sure. Uh, when we use uh, Android Norby and um, multi-peer connectivity, multi connectivity, sorry, uh, there is uh, already a uh, few uh, mesh uh, feature built in, so uh, you can connect to uh, to a lot of peer on you, and you can have uh, uh, something like uh, like uh, packet uh, bouncing or proxying uh, packet uh, between users. Uh, it works well, but uh, it, uh, I think it's also because it relies on a Wi-Fi connection. Uh, so there is a lot of uh, bandwidth, uh, better range, and so on. And uh, maybe in BLE, w one thing uh, we, an we are thinking of, uh, uh, so uh, it's uh, used by uh, FireChat or BridgeFi. Uh, it's uh, the broadcast mode of uh, BLE. So you can send packets. I think it's limited on, in size, uh, more limited. Uh, le mode broadcast, je ne sais pas si tu te souviens à quel point c'est limité par rapport à la connexion. Uh, yeah, I think you have a more limitation with broadcast mode in terms of size of the packet you can send. And uh, the, the, uh, you, you have to wait between two packets you send and, uh, and everything. But uh, it could work also for messages. I'm not sure it's, uh, it's something really uh, it could be okay if you if you take the example uh, we we had uh, previously of uh, like a big shadow group maybe uh, where uh, everyone is uh, interested by the message uh, exchange exchanged in this uh, in this group. Uh, but again, uh, we don't know. We yeah maybe uh, maybe i I'm not sure. It's it's uh, something we 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 can uh, use in the most. Uh, uh, in the most uh, common use case of Bertie, but it could be something, uh, yeah, maybe uh, to explore, to have, uh, to have like, uh, like a unique group in an event or something, and everyone broadcast messages to everyone. Yeah. Just another question. Um, what tooling do you use to test all this? Because this is um, super hard to get right and so on. So. How yeah. What's your testing setup? Uh, it depends. It depends on the step of uh, we we have like a tool to debug on um, on uh, on uh, our uh, computer desktop computer. So uh, you have tool to debug. Uh, let's say uh, GATT, uh, which is like the uh, the API uh, REST of uh, BLE. So uh, it will advertise services, and you have a method inside and so on. So you can check if everything is uh, is all right. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, mainly at the stage we are now, uh, we, we try to use a, a physical device and test if the connection is okay, uh, test uh, if we connect, uh, I don't know, uh, three devices uh, together uh, that are close, uh, uh, if we add a fourth device, uh, uh, which one will dis disconnect? And it's really, uh, it depends really on the on a lot of things. Uh, it's it's difficult to have like a clear metrics about uh, this kind of thing, because depending of the brand you use for uh, Android device, uh, for instance, uh, sometimes we have a really cheap device that works better than a, a flagship from Samsung or thing like that. We don't know uh, we don't know why, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, uh, yeah. It's uh, difficult to have like clear metrics about uh, what works and uh, what doesn't work.
And for what we saw, uh, it's the same thing for people working on uh, Andway and Norby. Uh, they have the, the they face the same issue. Uh, it's it's difficult to to handle all the cases uh, when you when you particularly when you work with Android. And uh, we cannot uh, use uh, virtual uh, devices to debug uh, because uh, the API is not fully implemented on the virtual devices. Yeah, emulator, uh, Android emulator and stuff. Il y a aussi, tu sais, un outil, un dongle qu'on utilisait que Niki avait donné, qui avait testé ça ou pas Yes. Ok, we also have um, uh, like a, a tool, but we don't uh, use it uh, often, uh, which is from uh, Nordic Semiconductor. Nordic Semiconductor is one of the biggest uh, constructor of uh, Bluetooth chip, and uh, they provide like a, a dongle, uh, like a USB key. Uh, you can uh, you can use it to 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 debug stuff about BLE. Uh, check the packets and and uh, check uh, stuff like that. So we use it, but not so often. We prefer to test it uh, with a real device. Merci pour le talk. Uh, <laughs> Merci. Um, I, I have uh, I had questions, but most of them has been answered, so it's great. About the festival, your example, I think, for the, the use case is great. When you are lost and you want to call and your friends can pick up and it's a mess. You can just have that. But I can stop thinking about Hong Kong and what happened in Hong Kong. Uh, they tried to disrupt and uh, the messaging services they were using. So they used the bridge file or something like that with mesh network. So maybe the next use case for Bertie to, to debug, you can do it at the, ne the next uh, big demonstration in Paris and <laughs> see how it works. But uh, in that use case, how, how will it work? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that you, 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 can do, uh, you can do something like that. We, we hope uh, we, we can be useful in this kind of, of scenario too. Uh, and uh, the, the thing uh, uh, people can do in this kind of scenario is just join the same group. Uh, a group IBRT is just like uh, a link or a QR code you can scan. So uh, we, we can think of uh, people just sharing uh, a QR code before, uh, before the, the protest or maybe uh, during the protest, uh, we don't know. Uh, something that they can just uh, uh, do uh, secretly or something. And everyone will be in the same big group. So uh, it will work uh, yeah, as, as a big, uh, big group. But in this scenario, we don't know how it will be uh, um, efficient. Uh, yeah, with a lot of people in the crowd, uh, we don't t tested it uh, yet. But uh, <laughs> uh, is will it be possible to have like a, a kind of admin for the group, and he can just crash the whole group and delete everything in a single press or something in case of emergency, for example? Uh, you, you mean uh, having people that uh, just uh, just uh, delete all the group uh, if uh, yeah, I don't know uh, the thing just collapse and it's, okay. it's, it's gone. if the bad guys uh, get a phone or something exactly um, yes okay uh, no uh, it's uh, I it's difficult to to do so um, it's for us is uh, on uh, on Bertie all the messages you send uh, are uh, immutable so. It's like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, link a list. Uh, actually, it's more DAG, but uh, you, you have uh, like message linked to each other, and you can't delete like just one message uh, in this list. Uh, but uh, what you can do is, uh, for instance, um, like uh, delete it from your your interface uh, and just. Uh, yeah, don't display it in your in your group. But if people uh, with I don't know, uh, you know, uh, like uh, big uh, uh, big expert uh, that take your phone and uh, check in uh, inside uh, if there is something, they will be able to to know that you have a lot of messages. Uh, what you can do in this uh, in this case also is to um, uh, to have uh, something to just uh, leave the group and delete all the secrets you have on your phone. So this way, even if the data remains somewhere in your phone, uh, you you will not be able to decrypt it. So yeah, that's the kind of thing we can uh, we can think of uh, in this kind of situation. But uh, uh, you 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 can delete uh, the message from uh, all the peers that share it, uh, and even on your phone you can delete one message in the conversation uh, with the Verti protocol. Thank you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Anton. Thank you.